Hello, everybody. Welcome to the CrossForge podcast. I'm your host, Darman, with my co-hosts, him and that guy. That guy, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, everybody. I am that guy, also known as Old Dan Mac. Um, been caught up with uh, CrossForge Gaming since, um, basically since its inception. Darman and I have known each other for a long time, and he roped me into this. So, here I am. Wow. Viciously roped. Aggressively, yeah. even. Ooh, and then like there's him. I am he. Wow. Yes, I am Polybius. I've been with CFG for like a month, two months, <laughs> maybe five. Didn't you? You definitely joined in like, wait a minute. I can look that up. Uh, you probably could. I don't know. It's Shoot. been a short while. Definitely a lot shorter than these schmoes. I don't know any of them. At least. You've been in the group since February of 19. February of 19? Bruh. Bruh. It's a lot of minutes. All right, I've thrown my mouse across the room. I can't click to other windows now. <laughs> no distractions. Oh, wait. But how am I supposed to... Oh, no. Oh, no. How am I supposed to look at the information that I have? Alt-tab? Uh, Alt-F4. You know? Actually, wait. No, yes. don't do that. We'll have to restart. <laughs> what do you mean don't press all control delete three times what do you mean deleting system 32 won't make my computer faster well i mean last time i tried that i downloaded some extra ram and my computer's been going real quick since wow yeah. amazing yeah so to kind of kind of get uh people a little bit more familiarized um we wanted to reboot the podcast because it's something that people have asked for. I think this is the third time rebooting it, and I think this one's oh. going to stick better than the others. Um, but coming back into it, it's always good to know what grounds you stand on with other people uh, and what kind of tastes they have. Um, so with that, I'd like to ask you, gentlemen, what are your top five nostalgic games oh beans i didn't know i had to come up with that many five Oof. five All right, I, well. i'm sure you can limit it down to four or you know three if you're getting real risque <laughs> Ooh. All right, well you can, you, you can go first mr mac i i gotta i gotta think about this <laughs> all right mr mac with the mic here shout out to t mac I think my I think my number one nostalgic game is Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time. I remember moving from Independence, Kansas, to Valley Center, Kansas, and in the drive there, in the U-Haul truck, my dad stopped at a Sam's Club of all places. My brother and I were with him, and he bought the N64 version of. Ocarina of Time that came with the wonderful guide. It was amazing. And uh, I think I can safely say that I've, I've played through that game at least 50 times. I now own it on the 3DS, and I still have the original uh, N64 cartridge. And so that one is obviously by far my top. Uh, I will play that game until it dies, which won't happen because it's electronic. So it's cool. Yeah, wait, 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 hold up. This dude went to Sam's Club and bought an N64? Just just the game, but yeah, man. They came in big plastic packages that you had to cut open. I didn't I know Sam, those days. I don't know Sam's Club sold anything like that. Every time I go to Sam's Club, it looks like Costco, but blue. <laughs> they they used to sell like Xbox games and stuff. I don't know if they still do. I haven't been to sam's club in a minute so wow sam's club's really been on the decline dang dang all right well you can keep going so that's now. your number one absolutely my number <laughs> one at following suit my my number two and number three are also from the n64 goldeneye 007 i think everybody can who's played it definitely it should be on their list uh, played the heck out of that game, especially with uh, Darman. I believe we played it back in the Dizay. 
Just at least twice. <laughs> at least twice. A minimum of two times for sure, and maybe four at the maximum. So you could say that it was highly played. Foundational for our relationship. Yes, absolutely. Not as foundational as this next one. Uh, the original Super Smash Bros. Bruh. Oh, lord. Man, those 12 characters and I, we have they've got a special place in my heart. I, I dare say when I Pikachu agree. Pikachu was quick as a whip. Yeah, I especially love Sans from Undertale in that game. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, it was the first character, dude. Don't mind him. Don't mind him. Continue. <laughs> uh, no, I'm. I'm not going to go through all five of mine. I want to. I want to hear you guys' thoughts. Oh, my thoughts. Oh man, got to start your prayers, thinking now. Depending on how you, how you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so terrible. He needs thoughts and prayers. Yeah, someone pray for this man. He played Double <laughs> Seven. I feel. Have like... you ever had an opinion so bad that somebody comes up to you and says, "I'll pray for you"? This is not one of them. Yeah, I dare say do, uh, GoldenEye was definitely a fun game. I didn't play too much of it because me and my boys were mainly stuck on Xbox and Xbox 360. This was a little bit before the Xbox times. Yeah, I, I came a little late to that party, not going to lie. So, Polly, I'm assuming that, that your most nostalgic games are probably from the Xbox and the, the 360. What do you got? Man... My most nostalgic games are basically, imagine growing up and not having many people to influence your opinion, so you kind of just went with whatever came your way. The first ever video game I played and really enjoyed was this really bad Spider-Man game that came in its own game console. Like, you remember those what? really old games oh, that like you'd plug? Oh, like one of the plug-in plays? Yeah, yeah. They had this. They had these gloves that you put on like gloves, and had little touch pads on the palms, and it had like the motion sensors in the hand, so it could tell you where you were putting them. And it's plugged in this really bad little box, and you plug it into the TV. Audio visual. There was what the red and the white, the yellow one. This thing did not have RCA. a yellow plug. It did not have one. It was just audio visual. So, I remember it's the first ever video game my parents let me play. I don't know why they were anti vidya game when I was a young chitlin, but I played that game like nobody's business after doing my maths homework early in the day. I was like, oh, can I go play Spider-Man? And I'd be like, oh, yeah, fine. And I'd be in there for hours on end. And there was only like two levels. And I have a freaking blast playing the same level over and over again, never beating it because I don't want to fight Doc Ock. I just want to swing on webs, dude. Get out of my way. I don't know why it gave me the option of swinging over the boss and having just respawn in like 30 more tiles. I didn't understand <laughs> it. I didn't know what I was doing. For me, I was just swinging around like Spider-Man, you know? Just having a grand time. Yeah. Was this like like 2D side-scroller thing going on? Yep. It was a it was wow. 2D side-scroller. It was freaking nuts. But yeah, that's probably, if I were to ever see that game again, I, I'd i question where you got that. I don't even know where my parents got that. <laughs> they got it at a yard sale. My life has been building up to a creepypasta for a bad Spider-Man game. But I'm like, wow. That's the first game I ever played and probably one of my childhood favorites because it was, it was the only one. <laughs> But yeah, then I started growing up a little bit more and I went to a very more, much more refined state of 2010. I was there during the startup of Minecraft. So that's definitely one of my most played games. I'm not going to say how many hours I have put into it, but my account's turning 10 in September. So that's, that's a good few minutes. I think my account just turned nine. Aw, you so Because I got into it at Dogs and Cookies. Dogs and Cookies? Wow. Yeah, Don't which feed was like alpha, alpha 13. 
something yeah, the along pre-release those lines. of Minecraft was nostalgic for sure. That, that's actually sick. on my list too. The uh, beta, beta 1.0, just before the adventure update, I believe. Actually, I could have just really embarrassed myself right there. I don't know when the adventure update came out, but the old with the green grass <laughs> and everything looked like crap, but it was a fun game to play. That's what Absolutely. I'm talking about. Absolutely. Darwin and oh, I had our right. own server back in high school with a with a buddy of ours. Yeah. I had my I had this really old HP laptop that was acting as our server, man. <laughs> if I could go back and recover that world, I would never not play that game again. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There oh man, I have I have a lot of very long my, really ridiculous Minecraft server stories, but that's probably its own entire episode series in its own. Um, yeah, coming... Mark that one down. Yeah, exactly. Coming <laughs> Just, next... This is episode 1B. It'll be yeah, coming one... out halfway in between <laughs> the second episode and this episode. Yeah, we'll, we'll start talking about Minecraft servers. Everyone's got their own experience. Everyone. Uh, you can't even lie. Polly's um, already yeah. planning his spinoff podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Really awkward Christian Minecraft's homeschool unschool servers. Yeah, that's yo. It's a niche. You just it's said a, a bunch niche. of synonymous words just linked together. Yeah, that's it's usually how life goes. But at, like, shoot, you didn't have to say homeschooled five times. No, there's two different things: homeschooled and unschooled. <laughs> Don't ask me what the difference is, could because God only knows. But <laughs> yeah, I recently just revived a really crappy meme chat from. Like, we had a Facebook page for homeschool kids, and we started a, a Facebook meme chat. And I forgot about it. Years. It's been about seven years since that chat was last used. And I was looking through message archives because, I don't know, I guess I just like looking back at my old self and realizing, yeah, 12-year-olds are really stupid. Um, <laughs> I think we need to but, bring back the Rage Faces. OG memes, those things were amazing. Rage comics were not great. But I found this meme chat from crappy homeschool Facebook page days. And I sent a meme in and everyone was like, what is this? Why hasn't this chat been used in seven years? I'm just surprised you were able to get on Facebook as a Christian homeschooled. Yeah, that's right. I had to fight for my life to get that. I probably it was sophomore year before I was really allowed on Facebook, but I, I kind of had extenuating circumstances. I was in junior high and my only circumstance was I was a loser. So my parents were like, fine, we'll give you something. <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> now you'll finally have friends. Yeah, I had to give a kid a win sometimes. Yeah, I got <laughs> I had to use my friend's MySpace account because my parents wouldn't let, let me make my own. So I stole his. Oh, man, how did you even oh. find girlfriends halfway across the world without a MySpace in junior high? Uh, RuneScape. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, you right, you right. And Club Penguin. Let me tell you about Club <laughs> Penguin real quick. But, yeah, let's figure we should keep on going down the list. My next most nostalgic game is likely going to be Portal 2. Oh, absolutely. That, that's a good one. I yeah. got it for the Xbox 360, and... I, for the first time I played through it, I couldn't beat it on my own. There was one level that drove me up the wall. And I said, how in the frick am I supposed to do this? Little 13-year-old me was not mentally prepared for the gauntlet that was Aperture Science. But I played it. And then I beat it. Then I played it again and beat it again. Then I brought my friend in and we played it and we beat it multiple times. And at the end of my little Xbox 360's Portal 2 uh, venture, I had every single achievement. My and goodness. Yeah. Well done. I love that game. No, that's seriously impressive. Yeah, and then I went on to get and play Portal 1. And then, of course, every other Valve game subsequently. Wait, wait, wait. So you played Portal 2 without the original context of the first one? Yeah, I had no freaking clue. <laughs> oh! I did too. Oh my! I did too, actually. In high school, I got oh. Portal 2 uh, for, for 20 bucks uh, because it was on sale at Walmart. I had never played the first one. Uh, yeah. But the second one, even as a standalone, is hilarious. I mean, oh, yeah. it's so it's wonderfully so written. 
especially that that was actually my introduction to listening to Jonathan Colton, the guy who wrote the songs for that. Yes, and he's, Jonathan Colton. He's been my favorite else. artist since Portal Two, since I got it, and I was like, "Wow, this is amazing." Uh, what you know about a code monkey? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Every year w- in November or somewhere around that time, uh, on my Facebook time hop pops up a post from from me from like 2010 or 11 and it says Ellen McLean is my hero and I, I mean, forget, and I forget about it and she's the voice of Gladys and she's still my hero yeah did you know that her and Jonathan Colton came together for the uh, Lego portals uh, portal DLC and they wrote a song called you wouldn't know and released it that's it's amazing. like a portal that's three amazing. song it's amazing I love the song um, but yeah, uh, Jonathan Colton is still producing music and going on tours. Just came out with a album of 70 soft rock covers called Some Guys, which is a play on, I think, uh, the Rolling Stones' Some Gals. That's amazing. That's great. And it's, it's a freaking great. Yeah. And I, uh, I got it and I have a signed co- copy of it in my CD collection alongside the collector's edition of Artificial Heart. Yeah, Jonathan Colton's a fantastic artist. I don't know what this has to do with nostalgic games, but we're going off. (laughs) Listen, nostalgia is such a big thing, and it's so strange, right? Because it ties all these different memories together. The nostalgic feel is a very feely feel, right? That... That you can only not feel just... in your feelers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, how else do you explain to somebody, you know, it's raining outside, there's a tornado warning, and you're in your basement jamming Minecraft and listening to My Chemical Romance all night. Like, it's a certain vibe Listen, uh, of nostalgia. Listen, if it's Wednesday, I'm not paying attention to that tornado siren, okay? Exactly. <laughs> they can't They can't hurt you if it's Wednesday. <laughs> Small town vibes. Darman, what do you got for, for your... I was just about to get into that. Go for it. So, I, my, my list is a lot more, I don't know, concise. Um, probably the first RPG I ever completed was uh, Paper Mario 64. It's a very Ooh, textbook game of simplicity. You know, sometimes less is more. And... It had such a in-depth character building system for Mario, but it's very simple that me at seven years old could complete it. I probably beat. I, I think the first time I beat that game, I spent fifty hours on that playthrough. I've Ooh. since cut that down to about thirty-five. Thirty-five so that's, minutes. That's game number one. Um, nah, man, seconds. Minecraft is in number two just because of all the memories. All the memories of servers, all the personal builds and stuff. It's how I actually really got into making videos. Making videos, I think that probably stemmed or stemmed from what? Tobuscus, PewDiePie. Oh my god. <sighs> Toby Game. I do miss Toby Games, but honestly, Tobuscus was not really uh, anybody that I would say I modeled myself after. He definitely was an influence, right? But I wouldn't say that he was, like, the reason I started. I really started because of uh, a YouTuber called Ko. Co-Star? He had, I think that's it, Co-Star. With the Minecraft With series Ko's Quest. Quest? Oh my yeah, that god. Dude. Alongside yeah. Avidia Zen and Good. The whole Minecraft yep. team. There we go. This guy, he understands. Yeah, so I, I was just really enthralled by the depth of Ko's quest in the world that he'd created. Um, so that and, and that's what really pushed me into wanting to make videos of many different kinds. Is because just Ko's vibe was so relaxing to me uh, in middle school, early high school. Hell yeah. Room with the View is a bop. (laughs) 
best video shameless ever. plug for Darman and I, you can still find some of his original videos from late middle school, early high school uh, of he and I. Shoot. Oh, I, I'm not going to look that up right now. I'm not going to. I don't... Th- there, There is one video even where you're feeding me cotton candy while I'm playing this crappy knockoff Quake shooter. That sounds amazing. That's still out there. Oh, you know what? Urban Terror. That's what it's called. That was going to be <laughs> game number three. Ah! Urban Terror was a free-to-play shooter and because I was poor and... I wouldn't say I was poor, actually. That's that's a misnomer. Um, my family did not allow me to get into a lot of expensive games. Um, it was what you got for your birthday and what you got for Christmas. You got two of the major releases that may have been that year. Um, and most of those were handheld games with the DS and the Game Boy Advance. So when I got into high school... Uh, Urban Terror was an open source game. It's still going. Uh, we actually played it for a game night about a year ago. But I just have many fond memories of walking up to friends who didn't know better or like they had just installed it. I was like, grenade hug! You could just hold a grenade and just walk up to him and boom. Points. Wow. And you didn't die? Yeah. Y'all holding oh, the no, grenade? You, I, you definitely died with them. Worth oh. it though. Such is the grenade hug. Mutually yeah, assured kamikaze destruction. Run, yeah. That's the name of Darman's game. That's that's mutually assured destruction. <laughs> that's very accurate. As as kids nowadays say, uh, big mood. <laughs> big mood. It's mint. Man, we're not saying vibe anymore. Oh, man, I'm so old. Come on, keep up with the lingo, man. You're younger than me. I heard mood like 2018, 2019. Yeah, 2018. So it's been a couple years. It's probably changed. It's probably yeah, some mood random is word something like else. Kool-Aid or banana right now. They're like, ah, oh, man, that's totally banana. All right, Kool-Aid <laughs> is generations past. Oh, we definitely yeah. did a reverse time skip. You ever go so far <laughs> into the future, you land in the past? Classic Martin yeah, McFly. That's what just happened. Yeah. To ring it back around to Jonathan Colton, <laughs> it's like the song De Evolving. That'll also be featured in Polly's spinoff podcast. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're just going to go this whole podcast. Uh, hey. How can I make this into a Jonathan Colton reference? Oh, wait, we can do that with everything because the man's wild. Wild as his beard, man. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I need more coffee for this. I've been skipping out on coffee for the past couple Ugh. days, and y- your boy's feeling yeah, it. Yeah, I bet. I'm like, who? <laughs> your boy's. I, I got a pot a day of liquid gold running through me. So those are three big nostalgia games. If I had to name any others uh two other formative games that reflected uh childhood memories definitely smash um just the entire franchise really because every time a new one would come out you and i would be playing it garrett (laughs) and i would be losing horribly (laughs) like a sandbag like a sandbag like a sandbag man is that some old person lingo that I don't understand? Yeah, man. You have to hit your mid-20s before you understand. Oh. Basically, Yikes. if you can't okay. easily rent a car, you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. I don't think anybody can easily rent a car in this financial climate. <laughs> Why would I do that? I don't have to go anywhere. I don't think anybody can go anywhere at this point. Uh you know, someone's going to listen to this podcast in like 20 years and wonder what's going on. <laughs> like, what do you mean you can't go anywhere? Did something, something happen? happen? <laughs> like, what's going on? It's like there's a blank space in the records right Someone here. called Taylor Swift. And she's got right where it should be. <laughs> it's okay. I'll get this on my cassette tape <laughs> and we'll, we'll have proper records of it. Oh, yeah. I got my eight track recorder going right now. More I actually do have Colton. a... There we go. Yeah, man. 
an eight track. I have. And the lesser known nine track, which is coming a little bit later. It's extra track. I have a, uh, I have a four track digital recorder for, from Tascam. Use it as a portable studio. Okay, but the real question is, can you yeah. use that? That's wild. To play hot cross buns. Uh, you know, likely not. It's all digital. This is like the more the modern portable studio. <laughs> but also, I don't know. I have an old Jensen cassette recorder, and I'm 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 hitting record, and so if you guys can talk into it. Actually, no, it's not going to pick up on your end, but let's see. Listen to this. <laughs> and I can hit rewind. <laughs> then if I hit play, oh. I, I was messing oh. around with this for a while. Oh, does it have? Was I supposed to hear something? Oh. There we go. Let's see if it'll come up. I heard it. You'll hear it on the cast. I, I really do. I wonder if it's going to work. I can hold it real close. Um, trying to figure out how this whole thing works. There we go. So, you're still hoping. Oh, that's wonderful. Dang. You really are work. aiming My for that creepy pasta. It works. That's good. I spent like 20 bucks on it. That sounded like the, the beginning recording of some sci-fi movie where somebody's <laughs> abandoned <laughs> in space. And they're like, day log one. I haven't had food for 36 minutes. <laughs> Future be like, no food. <laughs> what do you mean we don't have immediate access to food? What do you mean we have to work for it? Oof. All right, that's the wrong kind of future there. Man. But yeah, I got this because, well, I figured it may, it'd make it a little bit more interesting to make, like, journal entries because my handwriting is a bit god-awful when I'm not working on it. And just having digital files on my computer sounds pretty boring. Then, but yeah, having a whole bunch of cassette tapes dated from a specific date to specific date full of just ridiculous journal entries, that'd be pretty cool. Someone finds it after I die, and they're like, what is this? Then they have a whole probably few years of some dude talking into a really old microphone. Some historian is going to be like, my God, there's another one of these. I, I just finished another archive. Now I have to go through this schmo, <laughs> this dude. Does somebody even have a cassette player? Someone contact this. Yeah, exactly. Call the, uh, oh, I forget, the History Museum. Just what history please, museum? if you're going to make cassette recordings, just... Make more or less than 13, because no one needs another Netflix series. All right, oh, dude. Oh, Lord. Yeah. On I'm, that note. On that note. <laughs> Way to kill the mood, bro. So I pulled the community, right? I asked them two questions. I asked them the same questions I have for you guys, um, and if you're welcome to join in on these. Uh, I, th I figured we could talk about our worst games that we've ever played after we talk about the community's poor taste in games because my god some of these games are actually really good huh. <laughs> what do they got makes me upset so okay here are some of the top five top ten games uh that our facebook group of crossword gaming community has said were the worst games they've ever played uh to nobody's surprise uh, we have Superman 64 in the number one <laughs> slot, but it's tied with a much more modern game with the same amount of voters. Fortnite. Ooh. First of all, Superman 64 was ahead of its time. All right. <laughs> That's a weird way to say it was a tech demo and not a game. <laughs> oh, man, he found me out. Y'all put on your flak jackets. They shooting today. Listen, Look at I actually, my father bought Superman 64 on the day it came out, and he was so excited. Um, his disappointment was immeasurable when you couldn't even figure out how to get past the loading screen. Like, it's that broken. You had to, like, fly through a portal to load in 
the actual level, and all it was was a bogus flight simulator where you just flew through hoops. If I wanted to fly through hoops, I would load up a freaking Star Fox, <laughs> you know, just load up and just Wii go Sports zipping Resort. through some asteroids, you know, a real game, not a tech demo, not some poor artist rendition. They probably spent like six months like, okay, yeah, that looks like Superman, kind of. Yeah, go ahead. Send it. $60. Let's go. The sad part about it is that probably still took them months or years at the time, right? It it really did. And, and did um, that game, were you able to use heat vision or x-ray vision? You had you had a laser vision, okay. but it like you could only do it in certain places. Right. Um, the third and fourth games on this list... We have E.T. from the Atari, whichever number series it was. Oh, yeah, the one Good they Lord. buried in the desert. The one that was so bad that they buried in the desert, and people have excavated. What's that? Okay, the producer, director, director. The director is saying that it was the Atari 2600. Thank you, sir. Amen. Um, it was so bad that it, in New Mexico... Uh, it, there's a dump in New Mexico that they excavated to find old copies of this game. There are actual uh, promotional materials that have... There is a museum-grade display exhibit that went on sale for, like, a million? Not too long ago. I want to say it was in the fall of last year that somebody had compiled all this promotional material uh, along with a game in the plastic from the dump bro 1 million just dollars that is wild that's so well like you got to understand they had all of the index cards and everything uh newspaper clippings about uh the historic dump itself like there was just a big truck with boxes and just dumped it right there so i mean it it was such a flop of a game uh there wasn't any guidance on like how to play it or anything i need to get this game on an emulator i just want to experience the horrendous achievement that it was it was a really sad kind of game because they apparently they were working so hard on it but the et movie was coming out real quick so they rushed it like nobody's business and if you know anything about russian games uh not the country but like making games (laughs) go fast um it it takes the quality from you know somewhat decent and churns it down to uh not much listen that worked for majora's mask so it doesn't happen all the time sometimes you make great games when you rush them yeah yeah and sometimes you have tetris when you actually you know go by the country thank you director yes, he's coming in clutch all that good stuff. coming in super clutch yeah tetris was uh an actual russian developed game that that game has got a huge history behind it, but I don't I don't want to lose focus right now. Um, you were talking about making games go faster, though. Sonic 06. Bruh. Bruh. That gotta go fast. <laughs> it went so fast that they didn't even know how to program collision. Like, see, I am not aware of these games. I feel like I really missed out on uh, a horrible childhood. <laughs> that everyone else experience without without playing any of these games. Be blessed. I need the all of these on an emulator. Yo, just have a day where we all just sit down and play all these games together. Be like, yep, that is certifiably trash. We could have a five person stream all at the Yo, same time where we're all just, just playing just the worst run. games. Let's just speed run the worst games ever. <laughs> you turn on Superman sixty four. Oh, you're done. <laughs> Game over. Oh, oh, the only way to win is to not play. Start rolling credits. <laughs> bum, 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 ba, na, 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 na. Man. Brought to you by Robert Weed. <laughs> Weed. Is that five or do we have one more? Uh, that was the, the number five game is one that I don't necessarily agree with. There's a lot of games after this point that are seem to be more opinion based taste and opinion based like Fortnite is number two and i don't think that we can call that a broken or 
the worst game we've ever played. I don't. Th- if we're if we're going to use any objective measure of that, right? Yeah. But number five is Dragon Age Inquisition. Oh damn! Uh, which was an RPG. I think it's a Bioware RPG. Are they the ones that did Dragon Age? I am unsure, but I remember getting the uh, the magazine for it. In what is yes, it, it is a Bioware Formula? game published under EA. Dang! Apparently, someone didn't like it a whole lot. Wow. Uh, yeah, seven people were like, "Yep, nope, that's the worst game I've ever played." Seven people. Seven people. So it's a very scientific sample size. Yeah, I dare say. But yeah, I feel like when I was reading through all this, I was like, well, it just sounds like some of these people just didn't like a game, which I guess is understandable. I mean, for... But there's a couple there's a couple of notable ones that I'd like to point out um, that were like games that weren't terrible, but they definitely were not... Good. They, they were outliers in the franchise or something, right? Yeah. Um, like Fallout Brotherhood of Steel. That was an what? awful game. Was that a thing? Yeah, Fallout Brotherhood of Steel. If you go to the wiki, there's a guide, and I think at the end of it, it says, if you beat this game, may God have mercy on your soul. Oh it my. sucks. Oh. Okay. Um, well, the first one in the list that I thought was an interesting addition uh, was Shadow of the Hedgehog. Uh, it was a GameCube release, and it... you never expect the Sonic universe to like have guns and stuff. But then Shadow of the oh Hedgehog my. comes out and drops the I D word. That. Like in the first five minutes, it's like, damn, I'm Batman. I remember Is this on that. your worst oh games list? No, no, no. This is on the community's games list. I did play this game, though. I thought that game was great. I thought it was a wonderful... It, well, maybe not wonderful is a good idea, but mostly <laughs> just interesting adaptation to the universe. It was certainly it, it, something. Sir, it was... It was it, exactly. That's the best way to describe it. Certainly something. I'm like, it wasn't good, but it wasn't bad. It was... The it's gun mechanics of, were awful. Okay, that's understandable, but it totally came out. Okay, just but field. before that, they didn't even have guns, so how are they supposed to know how to use them? Yeah, you know. It's Shadow the Hedgehog. Dude. Asking the real questions. It's like you don't ask questions about Shadow the Hedgehog. He is a lot of people's anime waifu. They <laughs> they're bound to tell him something. The Edge. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole thing about the Sonic universe. Edge. Crisp, pointy. We've got a Bug's Life down in here, Dragon's Lair, which Dragon's Lair was a classic game, like before there was really more in-depth rules to game development. But I think there's something to be said that there are some games, like on this list, there's Detroit Become Human, right? (laughs) A game that... Well, I mean, between Dragon Slayer and Detroit Become Human, right? Uh, and games like uh, the famous or infamous uh, Death Stranding. You know, some of these games are more art pieces than games. I remember watching a live stream of Death Stranding and looking at it and be like, wow, I really like the uh, FedEx delivery system simulator. Right? Like... Yeah, you remember the uh, 2017, 2018, like, simulator craze where people just I made do remember. simulator videos. And I figured... There is a rock garden simulator on Steam, and it's like $5. Yeah. All it is is grass growing around a rock, a pet rock. I would have figured that Death Stranding would have been a big freaking hit in the middle of those that community. If they had released that game much earlier, yes. Because now... The joke's gone on too long, right? But then there's like, oh, we have a AAA simulator. Hmm. They spent millions of dollars so that they could have all these big actors. And everybody's forgotten about it. It's now... (laughs) How far out? It's been seven months since that game came out. Yeah, and nobody really talks about it. Except in... No, they don't. Why? Why? The game was supposed to be so groundbreaking and revolutionary. I thought we could have a beautiful art piece. Yeah, they wanted to 
uh, what is they wanted to expose Jeff Bezos for his treatment of Amazon <laughs> oh workers. Oh, Lord. And so, Yo. like, yeah, you're on a different planet now, dude. To be perfectly honest, Amazon I Mars. remember seeing Death Stranding being announced at E3 or whatever it was announced at, and I, I'm I was still waiting for it to come out before this conversation. Wait, you didn't know? <laughs> oh no! Uh, oh no! No, I I did not know that that game was already out. Oh. Well, sorry to break it to you. Yeah, bud. that game that was a game that was in development for like seven years. At least seven years since Hideo left uh, Konami. You know what we need I mean, to come at, out next? I think uh, Star Citizen is due to come out pretty soon. That's a joke and you know it. That's why I made it. Oh, man. <laughs> I would say Kingdom Hearts 3, but they actually did that to everybody's surprise. You know? Only took them a decade. <laughs> Half-Life yeah. 3 when? Oh, man. They came out with Alex, which is like Half-Life 2.5 or 2.6 now. Which gives me some hope, but... And the VR with it, right? That was cool. Oh, yeah. I've seen some videos of it. Yeah, they they already did Let's a whole see. bunch of chapters after Half Life Two. I'm like, y'all, just slap a fat three next to one of them and call it a day. You'll make everybody at this happy. point. At this point, Valve knows what they're doing, and they're just doing it to make people mad. Yeah, they're gonna get to really small decimals before they release Half Life Three. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean three? Yeah, they'll what, go like what's what is that? What is that variable? Like two point seven nine 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 nine. You just add in, you know, add infinitum. Up until nah, just do the Kingdom Hearts route. You just stop using numbers and just throw random names everywhere that don't mean anything. Half Life Alex. Chain of memories. They already started. Half Life first. seventeen divided by forty two times the square root of pi. Yeah. Half Life Lambda Rising. They're only gonna release Half Life <laughs> three after the nuclear holocaust or something like that. After the world's dead, they'll be like, "We did it. We'd have released Half Life 3. It's the greatest post-apocalyptic so, game ever. So these are all the communities games. What are some god awful games that you guys have played? Some god awful games. Some god awful games. Let me. Uh, you know what? Let's take a look at ye old Steam library because this is a uh, treasure trove. <laughs> a treasure trove of absolute nightmares. So I have one that uh, is probably. Very controversial, and it's even controversial in my own mind. But the the original Assassin's Creed, that game was revolutionary for its time, and I understand that. But I played Assassin's Creed Brotherhood first, I think, and that game got me into the series. And going back from Brotherhood or even from Assassin's Creed 2... To the original is rough. The original is just repetitive. And you you still have the cool, uh, all, all the cool stuff that you can do in it, but it, it's not as expansive as any of the other games. And I just remember getting about three quarters of the way through it and I gave up. And it wasn't until maybe seven or eight years later that I played assassin's creed 2 and even knew what happened at the end of assassin's creed 1 i think there's a lot of games that you look at them and you understand where a game comes from when you get to that first in a series right for sure like everybody remembers uh playing age of empires for the first time and then looking and see how the game progressed from there everybody remembers kingdom hearts 1 and then where it took off and lost pace from there right but like those original games they, they spawned such cool worlds and universes that I, I i could understand uh maligning the first game yeah because it, it doesn't necessarily even fit in with the rest of the universe uh or graphically gameplay or otherwise but it still sets the 
the expectation. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Darcy, I agree. I only have two games that I've ever played and did not enjoy. In my whole career. Only two? Yeah, only two. Apparently, I'm a very wow, optimistic this man, person. This man got lucky. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The only two games I've ever played and did not enjoy were first... Oh, it's it's still a shudder to talk about it. Is the Minecraft story mode from Telltale? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like that. That's, or, that's that's what I'm talking about, right? Is like games that aren't games. Yeah. Everything by Telltale. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> I can't much. do it. Can't do it. But yeah, story mode, Minecraft story mode was kind of a shudder. I was like, ooh, I have it in my Steam library, and I I try and forget about it. But you nice. can remove it. I bought it. I'm not going to remove it. It's, like, it's a piece <laughs> of history, Darman. Exactly. If, okay. I, if I'm going to waste my money, I'm going to save that wasted money until it's worth something. It might be a couple decades, but you know what? Maybe someday. <laughs> That's how I felt about my magic cards. The year is 3125. Everyone's hankering for a copy, a digital copy of the now deleted Minecraft story mode. <laughs> <laughs> Using a coding language that's been outdated for millennia. Millennia. <laughs> to put this into perspective, we have Unreal 64 here. This game was built in Unreal 3. <laughs> Man, modern year, Un Unreal Engine 4 is still the best. Although I don't know what they're on now. I Three. think they're... Weren't they just doing tech demos for Unreal Engine 5 with the whole PlayStation 5 release? Yeah, they that's what I heard. They have started to yeah, get ready to do some demos for Unreal 5, which I, even Unreal 4, I'm like, how does it get better than this? I With graphics for me, and maybe it's because I have an astigmatism, but graphics for me, eventually they just like, they get so good that I can't tell the difference. Like, you know, crucify me if you want, but I don't know the difference between 1080 and 4K. I don't understandable. It's gonna look the same to me. It's all on my laptop screen, so for me it doesn't really matter. Right. <laughs> I can still see my workshop out the corner of my eye. The realism was <laughs> never there. But yeah, the only second game I've ever played and didn't enjoy was Elder Scrolls Online. And yeah, I do agree, Elder Scrolls Online is a good game. I just could never get into it. I felt like it was Skyrim with extra combos and Mana Marco King of Worms again. <laughs> it's like Skyrim with extra steps. Exactly. Didn't I already beat this guy in Oblivion? Unless he got stronger, I don't want to fight him again because that first one was way too easy. So I, I think there's a trend here. Uh, I, I don't believe that... It made it onto the community's list, but Fallout 76. I was shocked. Yeah, Fallout 76 was not on the worst games played list. Uh, by the same virtue, No Man's Sky was also not added on that list, which was absolutely <coughs> shocking to me, seeing as those games got some of the widest vitriol posted online <coughs> just the margins of hate for the developers um the no man's sky team was like on alert like we had it was insane how how far people went to i don't want to use the word bully but I mean, show they, moderate they, they, to severe disdain for. Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> one of the guys that the guy that ran the company that made No Man's Sky got like death threats from people, so I'm pretty sure that could be counted as a uh, a little bit Oof. of bully or yeah, no, maybe that, some that's slander. definitely bullying. <laughs> and so, like, I'm not I'm not saying that he didn't deserve hate, right? Because it the game was not as described at launch. Oh, right. I think the game not. is finally in its final image now, uh, where they were advertised the game. But right, but don't don't release a game and essentially have it be the beta for something else. Okay, this is like Xenoverse or one at and two. At least, if you're gonna do that, at least give it the early access title. Right. Yeah. 
and it's such a beautiful game. I think that and just the the sense of endless adventure was what really drove people to it. And then when you I I, I never played the game, but you know, from what I heard, when you first when the game first came out, it's like you were just literally all alone and you couldn't find anybody and because it was single player, even though they right. made it out to be <laughs> multiplayer. But yeah, it has redeemed itself in many ways that probably none of us ever saw. I was quite impressed. Now it is multiplayer, For sure. and you can be a pirate. Wow! Can I get an <laughs> eye patch? Wasn't though? it? Wasn't it originally only on the PlayStation? I no, I don't think so. Hmm. I thought it was a, a PlayStation exclusive. Maybe that's how it was advertised at the beginning. Well, Again, things changed. Right. A lot of things My changed. My thought is maybe it did so bad on the PlayStation that they were like, man, we need to get we, we need to get some buyers. So they released it on the Xbox. <laughs> they gave it to the PC yeah, so, modding community and said, here, please. So the initial... Pulling up Wikipedia here. So the initial release was at first on the PS4. Okay. Uh, it released in North America on the 9th of August of 16 and the 10th of August in the EU. It hit <clears throat> Microsoft Windows uh, the 12th of August and Xbox One two years ago, uh, 24th of July 2018. That's, That's what I'm saying, weird. man. Wow. So it was just PC and PS4 exclusive. I suck at Xbox. Time. Dude, always suck at Xbox. I have an Xbox. Worst decision. PlayStation <laughs> all the way. All right. So we've talked about some of the worst games. We've talked about our personal nostalgic games. The community, uh, the community's most nostalgic games were some were shockers. Uh, others were very understandable. Um, number one at the top was Star Wars Battlefront 2 by Pandemic. There we Pandemic. go. Freaking fantastic! Are you even allowed game. to say that word right now? Too soon, bro. Pandemic. Ooh, again. Oh, he said it again. Oh, he oh, said snap. the words. Oh, ah! Somewhere, a CDC rep just lost their degree. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Star Wars Battlefront Two by uh, P Word Studios and Savage Entertainment was <laughs> the number one. <laughs> That's somehow worse. <laughs> Yeah, that, that actually Somehow. made it worse. You made it derogatory, you it. and I wasn't... You didn't think it could be worse, but... <laughs> but yeah, that yeah, is man, Battlefront 2 was phenomenal. Um, and then when they revamped it a few years ago, what a letdown. That, that's another one of those things where they advertised it so well, right? Yeah, Just like all of these Dice. other games. Well, and we thought we could trust DICE. You know, the creators of Battlefield and everything. We thought we could trust DICE with the franchise to do it justice. And they really just kind of made it nerf guns with Star Wars skin. Well, they teamed it with... Yeah, teamed don't with you know EA, that DICE so that basically mean help. gambling? And gambling's not a good time. So if you trust DICE... <laughs> that explains all of the loot boxes. Yeah, y'all done for. But yeah, I remember playing as Darth Vader on Hoth on Battlefront 2. And I think my friend was Luke Skywalker on the other team, and I just clap him hard for like 30 minutes until the round ended, because we made the round super long. <laughs> what an epic gamer moment. Yeah. Man, the OG Battlefront 2, though, uh, when you were in space between uh, the two ships and being able to like be in space and shoot them up and then go in, uh, I think it was the Destroyer. Um, and then yes. fighting there, that was phenomenal. What? A, yeah, absolutely. Guys, I don't know if you knew this, but this game is on Steam. Bruh. Should we have a game night for this? Absolutely we should have a game night for this. I don't know why that's even up for discussion. Oh, excellent. Cool. Just I'm just going to jot that down for really soon. Mucho much soon. But All right, we're expediting it. Wow. <laughs> That'll be an extra $20, sir. Yeah, exactly. You get the speed bundle. <laughs> What's that? You want overnight delivery? Okay. Well, you say so. <laughs> That's an extra couple gumballs off you. But man, <laughs> Star Wars Battlefront 2, classic 2005, 999. 
worth it. You, you know go. that they had to distinguish that it was classic 2005 because of all the hate that this the new one got. Yeah, they had. They were like, "All right, we have to distinguish these, or else this game's never gonna sell." But now, I think that, that's another game, right? Can't, that was so bad that now it's free, right? Which game? Mm-hmm. Uh, the new uh, Battlefront Two. They, they, it's not free. No. Okay. Uh, they, it was on one of the subscriptions though, uh, as a game of the month that you could download. Um. And then you got to keep it. I think that was on PS Plus at some point recently. But uh, moving down the nostalgic community games list, we've got The Legend of Zelda. I'm Absolutely. assuming that they're just referring to the franchise. The whole the whole thing. Because the first game was something else. It was tough, man. I, it I was mean... extremely tough. And following it up with uh, Legend of Zelda 2... Side scrolling advent- Boogaloo. Adventure of Link. <laughs> Link's yeah. adventure. There we go. That was. That's a game that I would put as not what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? It's like. You ask for a Grand Theft Auto for Christmas and you get uh, The Simpsons hit and run. That's kind of what it's like. <laughs> After The Legend of Zelda, we've got Age of Empires. Um, yes, classic yes. RTS. Uh, funnily enough, StarCraft is way further down on the list. Like the real classic RTS games, like uh, Outpost, not on this list. And that may just be like an age thing, right? Um, not everybody grew up with PC gaming in the '90s. Uh, we got Roller Coaster Tycoon, which is a PC game from the '90s that do people do remember. Halo CE. There we go. Donkey Kong. Yeah. Ouch. Donkey Kong Country. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 2. Pokemon Crystal and Knights of the Old Republic rounded out. See, now what we really need, where's To the Moon by Freebird Games? It's definitely probably one of my favorite I games would, ever. I'm, I'm kind of sure that I would. Are we on nostalgic or worst games? We're on nostalgic, right? Yeah, we're on nostalgic. We're on nostalgic right oh, okay. now. Okay. Wow. We I went, was very confused. I went through a much shorter list with the, the worst games. I was like, who doesn't like Donkey Kong Country? That was an amazing game. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I think you missed when I transitioned into these were the worst games community. And now let's talk about what the community did like. Man, I did, speaking I did make a transition. Of wonderful. Donkey Kong games, a game that's highly underrated, Donkey Kong 64. Man, that was a fun game. That was an that amazing game. That game was really good. I actually wonder if I can find the uh, the booster pack and find a copy. Oh, bro, I got it. It's a. It's, I know it's you in my got bag it, but... right now. <laughs> Yellow cartridge and all. Yellow cartridge. You need that you ever... extra 64 megabytes of RAM to run it. Dang. Hell yeah. <laughs> I think I got extra 64. A whole extra? Man. Did we ever figure out what version your uh, your Zelda cartridges were? Mm. Okay, so here, here's, here's a fun fact um, of my random Zelda knowledge. The Zelda uh, Ocarina of Time came in at three versions that I know of. Obviously, back then... Um, they could not just do updates online. So Ocarina of Time first came in a gold cartridge. Standard, obviously it was the first edition, so it didn't change. Uh, then there was, then they switched to a gray cartridge. No, excuse me. They can, they stayed with the gold cartridge, but they changed in the fire temple, the second temple that you go through as an adult there was some Islamic chanting that Wait, went back up. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in in the original Ocarina of Time, there was some uh, there was Islamic prayer chanting, Bruh. <laughs> in in the fire temple, but they had to remove that chanting. Um, this was obviously in 1996 or somewhere around that time. So like we didn't totally. So we're pre- we're pre-2001. Yeah, we're right. pre-bad That's time. That's important. 
So the reason for them removing it was because that specific prayer was supposed to be done without music. And the, the fire temple obviously had music. Um, so then you fast forward to, to the next one. And actually, it's funny enough, there's a similar reason for this next change. They went to a gray cartridge. And the gray cartridge was still, quote unquote, version two, just with a gray cartridge instead of gold. And then uh, after that, they changed the symbol for the Gerudo tribe. It was uh, a crescent moon with a star. Um, but like I said, similar to the original reason that they changed the chanting, that turned out to be a symbol that was closely associated or similar to uh, a tribe in the Middle East that was kind of like no good. So now they have this really weird symbol that you see in all the 3DS games. Uh, I believe it's the same for Majora's Mask, uh, but those are there the was, versions. Between one of the versions too, there was a couple of changes. Like when you hit Ganon, he would bleed green and not red. Oh, that's right. You know, I forgot about that. That that, that was been cool. Um. I want to say that was between version two and three. Yeah, Yeah. it was still on the gray cartridge. So that was a thing. Um, When you hit him, he would puke green blood. That sounds instead of red. Sounds not delicious. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, no. I honestly, green is almost more disgusting and violent for me. I'm like, oh, something's going on. He's got like, (laughs) he's got like dead bowel that's just coming. He got worms. But yeah, that I do agree. That is quite. And on this the has been side. Zelda four one one, so with old four one one. Wow, I got a level four hundred class for free. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I feel so enlightened. But yeah, I didn't know anything about that that you just talked about old Zelda game. I was like, wow. I did myself some some education today. That's a good time. You're welcome. Yeah, like, yeah, you got a 400 level class on wow. Ocarina of Time. I went by from... listening to this podcast, you agree to terms and conditions to pay us forty nine ninety five in two installments over three years. Exactly. <laughs> and we might even be able to install Google Ultra on your computer, like the CIA. <laughs> if you get right us after an extra we install bucks. LimeWire. Exactly. Yo. <laughs> Actually, no. Talk about nostalgic throwback. Oh, yeah. Let's make one quick run back to nostalgia real quick. Miniclip games. Oh, you got it. My favorite game on Miniclip was Final Ninja. Final Ninja? What is that? It was a side scroller where you had ninja stars and a swing from rope. Then there was the sequel, Final Ninja Zero. Then both of them disappeared. And I don't know what happened to them. I can't find them, but I'm like, man... Is this like one of those plug and play games again, or is it a? It was on Miniclip. Is it a computer game? You know Miniclip.com. What is it? Miniclip.com, man. Like half their games are made by Miniclip. Yeah, Miniclip. It's an OG gaming site. It's it was the old uh, Java, um, Adobe Java Flash player, plug-in games. Oh. They also had the popular game Motherload, which was a banger, and a bunch of other wild ones. There was another one where you slingshot penguins at each other. I remember that for some reason. (laughs) Man, speaking of old Flash games, my favorite Flash game, and if I could find it, I would pay at least $7 for it in any other medium. But there was a game on Neopets.com called Castle Crashers, I believe. And it was like you were two of these like toddler kings playing a game, but you basically made a Lego castle and you shot cannons at the other person to try to knock their treasure chest off of its mat. And that game, I, man, I have tried to play it, but you need one of those like really old uh, Adobe Flash Wave runners shock oh it was shockwave shockwave yeah Yeah, you i remember but man that game i played for hours and it was just the same thing over and over again and eventually i found out the the best castle to build because if they hit you then it would just cover up the chest and they couldn't hit it anymore so it's not like it was a 
like difficult. It wasn't a challenge for me, but man, that game was uh, wonderful. So once you figured out how to dupe it, you basically became the king. You were top. Yeah, man. I growed up. I went from toddler king to slightly bigger toddler king. I grew another <laughs> inch. I'm the tallest one on the playground. But yeah, that is a good time. Every like I do too. I remember also being three foot three. Oof. <laughs> As someone who's six foot two, that's that's sad, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's like up to, up to my leg. Well, I think this is a great point to wrap it up, gentlemen. Thank you so much for uh, allowing me to kidnap you into this escapade of podcastery. Hey, man, yeah, who's man. playing the outro music already? What? Someone's playing music what? in the background. <laughs> There's music. <laughs> wow, uh, that sorry. was uncomfortable. Sorry, r wrong music. <laughs> yeah, man. here. Let's let's put the correct music down. No, please don't. This man's gonna oh. play, like. What is it? I'm just scared. Uh, I'm I was so just nervous. gonna put the outro. The outro oh, goes no. here. No, yeah, yeah. Outro goes here. Start That's playing fine. C4 I thought 18. you were gonna play something cringe. No, we're just gonna cold cut end it. Done. We're Soprano done. Soprano style. <laughs> <laughs>